everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Epic Book Recs. So this is a monthly series that I host here on the Epic Reads channel where I recommend a bunch of books based on a certain theme. So I've previously done a bunch of themes, so you can go check out all of those in the playlist linked down below. But today's theme is one I'm very excited about because most of the books in this video are some of my like all-time favorites because I love sci-fi and fantasy as well, but sci-fi I absolutely, absolutely love. So I'm gonna be recommending some of my all-time favorites today and it's just gonna be an awesome time. All right, so the first book that I have for you today is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. I recently read this and I had so much fun with it. It's such a cute, fun, lighthearted sci-fi, but it kind of has a killer twist towards the middle slash end and that's not really a spoiler because I feel like it sets you up for the expectation that there is gonna be something thrilling about this. But basically this book follows her main character Romy Silvers who is the commander of this ship called the Infinity and it has been away from Earth for I think about 6,000 days and the basic mission of the Infinity was to travel to this other planet that had Earth-like conditions to basically start another Earth and start a new, you know, civilization. Kind of like an Earth 2 and kind of continue the human race. So Romy wasn't actually from our original Earth. She was born on the Infinity. Her parents were some of the astronauts tasked with creating this Earth too, but in a freak accident all of the astronauts on the ship die, but Romy was born before that and she kind of grew up before that. And somehow she ends up being the only person on the ship with a bunch of like embryos frozen that are to be born and you know grown on Earth 2 and to create the new population of Earth. So Romy is literally the loneliest girl in the universe, but when another ship called the Eternity is kind of sent after hers to kind of help her and continue with this journey to the Earth 2, she gets really excited because she finally has someone to talk to because she is so far from Earth that any messages that she gets out kind of take a really long time to get a reply from Earth. And so this new ship called the Eternity is coming and there is a commander on that ship called Jay and there might be a romance. There may not be a romance. I don't know, but there's also kind of a twist. And it is such a fun and interesting read. It was very different from anything I've read before, so I really enjoyed it. And it's definitely great if you like space books, if you like, you know, a bit of sci-fi. But if you didn't want something super alien heavy and something kind of near future seeming, then this one is a really great one. All right, the next book that I want to recommend is a light sci-fi, and it does take place on Earth, but it does involve some aliens, and that book is I Hope You Get This Message by Farah Naz Rishi. This is a very new book, and I was so excited to read this as soon as I heard about it. It just seemed super, super cool. Basically, it follows your three main characters that are pictured on the cover. It follows Jesse Hewitt, Kate Collins, and Adim Khan. And we are kind of getting a snapshot of their lives, a week of their lives, just after Earth receives a message from this alien planet called Alma. And in that message, they basically find out that Alma has created Earth as kind of a colony. And they've deemed that humans have not been acting in the best interest of their planet or of each other. And so Alma is hitting the kill switch on Earth. And everyone's gonna die in seven days. And so that is kind of the inciting incident of this book. And so all three characters are kind of reeling from that news and dealing with that news in very, very different ways. And their lives are on very different tracks. And that news kind of causes them to do very different things. So in Adim's case, he is dealing with the fact that he hasn't seen his sister in a very long time. She ran away from home after her parents found out that she was gay. And so he is determined to find her and make things right with her and his family. In Kate's case, she has a mother with schizophrenia and she's always heard wild stories about her biological father and so she is determined to find her father before the world ends and really get an answer to all of her unanswered questions. And then with Jesse Hewitt who lives with his underpaid mother, both of them who are kind of struggling to pay rent, he doesn't really believe that the end is coming and he is determined to make a few bucks off of this situation because he has reached a point in life where he doesn't really feel like anything really matters. Not the boys that he hooks up with, not the job that he has, you know, nothing really matters. And so he he is kind of making the most of these last few days because he doesn't think the world is going to end and he thinks it's just going to continue, you know, trudging on the way it has been. And it's just so interesting the way that these characters are dealing with the end of the world and I really really enjoyed that aspect of the book. So I think it's really really great if you wanted a book that's kind of sci-fi-y but not really. It really is about the people uh, in the book and their relationships and the way that they're trying to salvage them before the end of the world. All right and for a sci-fi recommendation video I can't go without mentioning The Illuminate Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is one of my favorite series in 
the world because it is just so cool and so wild and just unlike anything I've ever read before. Basically it takes place like hundreds of years into the future. It follows a different pair of main characters in each book but it begins with these two characters Katie and Ezra who have kind of broken up recently and they are each other's exes and when their planet kind of gets attacked by this like biotech company by their like spaceship they are kind of evacuated onto another spaceship and they're running away from the one that attacked them and then there is a crazy AI involved in this story and some really crazy death trolls but the interesting thing about this series is the way it's told so it's told in like this dossier format and all the pages are kind of very unique and strange and interesting. You're seeing interviews and security cam footage and like countdowns and IMs and messages and emails and the story kind of unfolds from the way you are reading these documents. But these documents have also been curated by someone so you are seeing a story unfold the way that someone wants you to and as you continue through the series it kind of gets stranger and weirder and crazier and the stakes only get higher. But I absolutely loved this series and I definitely recommend it if you love sci-fi, if you wanted something set in space. This series is set mostly in space. Most of the characters are on spaceships of some kind or another and it's just really really interesting but also be prepared to have some of your favorites die and to have your mind blown with all of the crazy twists that go on in this series. All right, the next sci-fi recommendation I have for you is another kind of lighter sci-fi. This one takes place on Earth, but I absolutely love it to pieces. It's one of my favorite series of all time, and that is the Warcross series by Marie Lu. So this book is kind of like Ready Player One, if you've ever read that or seen the movie, but it does have this kind of gaming vibe to it. It takes place about five years into the future, where this game called Warcross has kind of taken over people's social lives. It was created by this young man named Hideo Tanaka when he was very young, and he's only like 21 now. And in Warcross, there are these like tournaments and championship games and it draws the attention of basically everyone. But our book follows our main character Amika Chen who is this 18 year old girl who is kind of struggling to make ends meet. She is a bounty hunter as well so she catches criminals who are gambling or you know doing illegal things on Warcross and she catches them in real life and brings them to police and kind of gets paid for that. But when she is in a really bad bind she ends up kind of playing Warcross on one of her illegal accounts and glitches herself accidentally into a tournament game and it catches the attention of the creator of the game Hideo Tanaka. And although Amika totally freaks out, Hideo ends up sending her an offer to come to Japan to play as a member in a Warcross team for the championship so she can catch a hacker that has been plaguing the game and that Hideo is very worried about. And so Amika is literally a player, hunter, hacker, and pawn in this book. She is a spy but she is also a player in the game and she is just up to some really crazy things. There's also a really great romance in this book as well and I really enjoyed that. But as a sci-fi read it was super awesome and I really really enjoyed it. I definitely think it's one you can dive into if you're not super into like the spaceship or like the alien or like outer space type of sci-fi if you wanted more of a you know earthbound grounded sci-fi then this is a great one. All right and the last book that I wanted to recommend to you today is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. So this is a sci-fi but also kind of a dystopian book. It is set to hundreds of years into the future when humanity has basically conquered death and disease and any kind of thing that can kill a human. They no longer have to die and they can reset their age back and so they can kind of live multiple lives and continue on endlessly. And so to combat population growth there's this organization or set of people called sides. And the sides are bestowed the honor and ability to kill people which is called gleaning in kind of these certain quotas each year and in a spontaneous way or whatever way that they choose. And so there's always this fear that even though you can continue on living there is this fear that a side might one day come knocking on your door. And so this book follows our two main characters Citra and Rowan who are these young teenagers who kind of get visited by this side who offers to take them on as apprentices to become sides themselves. And so as Citra and Rowan kind of train together they also know that they cannot both be sides in the end. One of them will not get to make the cut but they are learning the art of killing and they are learning how sides kind of go about doing their job. But the world of this book is just so interesting. There is like an AI that runs all of humanity 
and all of the countries. And there's a strong element of humanity kind of having forgotten what it means to, to be human, to, you know, have a short life, to be fearful of what's to come and to be fearful of your life ending before getting the chance to do all that you wanted. And so there's this interesting kind of conversation about death and humanity and all the things. And this book is just so awesome and I loved it so, so much. And there are two other books in the series and the last one recently came out, so definitely go check it out. But great, great sci-fi series. But those are all of the books that I wanted to share with you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you enjoyed getting some sci-fi recs. I really hope that those of you who do not read sci-fi that often have found something that you might want to pick up. And for those of you who are old time sci-fi readers, I hope you have found something new to pick up and add to your TBR. So thank you so, so much for watching and please leave me a comment down below with your sci-fi recs. I would love to hear them. I'm always up for more sci-fi reads and I will see you in the next episode of hashtag epic book recs. Bye!